Alright gang, now that we've discussed the basic EAS reactions and mechanisms, and we've kind of fiddled, fiddled around with how to, you know, figure out if something is an ortho director, aka an EDG, or electron donating group, or a meta director, aka an EWG, electron withdrawing group, now let's talk about some helper reactions, some things that are going to really beef up our abilities to complete the reaction successfully and come do synthesis problems for everything under this big umbrella of aromaticity and reactions with benzene. Okay, no better place in my opinion to start off than kind of a piggyback reaction to our sulfonation reaction. Remember, <clears throat> we said if we threw in some sulfur trioxide and some sulfuric acid with a benzene ring, we're going to stick on this sulfonyl group, right, this SO3H. However, the reaction we're talking about in this video, and I'm going to kind of highlight it over here, if we have a sulfonyl group at all on our benzene ring, any one at all, and we threw in some acid and we cranked up the heat, right, we have a, tri a delta symbol, well, what that does for us is that completely removes this SO3H group. So you might be thinking to yourselves, like, all right, cool, but why do we want to undo something that we can, you know, why would we do something just to then later undo it? Well, believe it or not, this can serve as a great blocking group, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, let me give you just this kind of quick example, and you'll kind of see the value in being able to put sulfonyl groups on as well as take them off. So let's just say we start off with our classic methoxybenzene. Remember, we know directly attached to the ring, he's an electronegative atom, he has electrons to donate to the ring. He's an electron donating group as well as an ortho para director, right? So I'll do O slash P for ortho para director. Let's just say we were given the task to produce this benzene derivative over here, this benzene esque product, right? So you might be thinking to yourselves, okay, is this really that hard? Why can't we just one arrow go one step with Cl2 and AlCl3? Well, that's not really going to work out the most efficient way. Because remember, metho or this methoxy group is an ortho para director. And remember we said, sterically speaking, if you're putting a group on, uh, the best way that the, the sterics can work out is if you put the group para. We're going to get a nasty mixture of ortho para, probably leaning more towards para, because chlorine isn't exactly the smallest atom. And these groups right here are probably going to collide if they're next door to each other in the ortho positions. So here's where this reaction can come in very handily. Here's what I'll do. So if I were to first throw in some SO3 and some H2SO4, here's what we can expect. The sulfonyl group, as we've seen in its expanded form, is pretty big, right? So you can bet pretty surely that it is going to get, be directed into the pair position from the methoxy group, okay? Right? Because there's no way we're going to put this massive bulky group uh, ortho to the, the uh, OCH3. So, here's kind of what we can do. Now that this position is effectively taken or it's blocked, right? Now, if we do Cl2 and AlCl3, remember, he's putting electrons into the ring. He's activating the ring. He's the one who's going to be actively directing groups, not this electron withdrawing sulfonyl group. So he has no choice. He can't, this group can't direct this chlorine para. The only place it can possibly go is in one of the ortho positions, right? So you see how this works? Now if I drew the result of this, I didn't touch my methoxy group. I didn't touch my sulfonyl group. And now, I just add on that chlorine, right? So you can see how we've occupied that pair position with our sulfonyl blocking group. And the best part is we clearly don't want him in the product. So all we have to do is use our reaction that we just learned up here. If we throw in some H3O plus and some heat, that sulfonyl group wiped away and is good as gone. Okay, one quick thing to note because we're gonna kind of use this similarly with another group and taking it off, you need acid and heat. The other group we're going to discuss just needs acid, but for any sulfonyl group, if there's no heat, he stays on. Just want to make that completely clear. Okay, so we have a few more reactions to discuss. They're really not that difficult. I know you guys are going to be able to handle them. 
So let me erase this and we'll move on to the next reaction. Okay gang, so let's look at another reaction that's going to be extremely beneficial for our predicting the reaction purposes and our synthetic purposes. Okay, so whoop, let me draw this. So we know, let's look over here, if we took a regular old benzene ring and we threw in some classic HNO3 and some catalytic H2SO4, then we can stick on a nitro group, right? An NO2. We know he's electron withdrawing, blah, 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 meta director, all that jazz. Okay, well, maybe you're in a situation where, you know, you kind of want a nitrogen group attached to your ring, but you want him to be an ortho para director, right? We need to kind of transform him into an electron donating group. Well, if you throw in some H2PDC, you can reduce your nitro group to an NH2, to an amine, and then if you look a little more, if you look a little more closely, instead of that partial positive nitrogen with no electrons to donate, now you have yourself an electronegative nitrogen attached to no oxygens whatsoever, and he has electrons to donate, so he could pump those into the ring, and now he's an electron donating group, an EDG, as well as an ortho pair director. So let me show you an example of how this could be valuable. So let's just say you start off with the regular old benzene ring, and let's just say for fun, we are trying to make you know, an NH2 up here, and having a bromine pair to it, because bromines are pretty big. So if we were to brominate, <clears throat> the odds of ortho happening with any other group is pretty low, because bromine is very big. He would like to go pair it to minimize that steric strain. Okay, so how do we accomplish this, right? Well, let's first stick on a nitro group, because we need some source of nitrogen, right? That would give us an Na or NO2. All right. So at this point, <clears throat> we're thinking to ourselves, damn, we have a nitrogen, you know, group on our ring, but we know he's a meta director, right? Because we know that this NO2 is a withdrawing group. It's a meta director. Well, this is where the H2PDC comes in play, right? If we reduce our NA our NO2 group, PDC, I say reduce because that's the opposite of oxidize, right? So H2PDC. That then gives us an NH2. And that's awesome, right? Because now we have the ortho pair director we discussed up top. All we need to do is throw in a little Br2, FeBr3, and we're good to go. So you can see the advantages of being able to reduce a nitro group. Super awesome, right? I will say, though, there's a little shortcoming of the NH2 group because sometimes you can get yourselves into trouble. And I know I have this on your worksheet, but I do want to talk about it with you guys just to make sure everyone's on the same page. So I'm going to erase this. Hopefully that's okay. Okay. So even though this NH2 is an ortho pair director, you have to remember what it is, right? He's an amine. Amines are very basic, right? We're talking, you know, around like ammonia who has a pKa of around 35. So I'm not saying it's the best base in the world, but it's certainly not near water or near acid. He is absolutely going to pick up H plus if it's around. So here's where that can get us into some trouble. Let's say we were kind of using that same strategy like we just did. We had this NO2. Let me draw this. So let's say we added a nitro group, a little H2SO4. We add a nitro group. We then reduce the nitro group with H2PDC, right? And instead of you know trying to add something para like a bromine, let's say we wanted to add, let's say a sulfonyl group, right? Let's just say we wanted to put a sulfonyl group right here. We know they're big and bulky, so there's no chance of them going ortho. They would definitely go para. Well. If we did that, I'm going to tell you right now, here's what would occur. Here is the regiochemistry that would occur. Here's like the regiochemistry meaning where things actually end up. This is what we would get. We actually would direct meta, and here's why. Because this NH2 is so basic, at some point in the mechanism, because we have all this strong acid around, this NH2 is going to grab H plus, that's going to make him that's going to make him NH3 plus, 
and look at what kind of director he becomes. He has no more electrons pumped to the ring, and he's positively charged. So, if there's acid around, you have to do something to your amine group to make sure he doesn't accidentally get protonated, and there is a workaround. Instead of just leaving your amine group as an NH2, what you have to do is this. You have to what's called acetylate him. And you're just allowed to kind of make up this carbon piece and throw it into the mix. You have to put in some acetyl chloride. Because if you just throw this in, what's going to happen is this NH2 is going to attack this carbon right here and kick off the chlorine. We'll talk about that more when we do amines. But basically, you then have a situation where your nitrogen turns into an amide. And believe it or not, he's still an electron donating group. He still directs ortho para. Oops, can't spell. He still directs ortho para because he's an electron pair. But he's less basic. Meaning that if acid presents itself, he's not going to pick up H plus and become have a positive charge and change his directing preferences. So if I'm going to go back to having this NH2, and we want to obtain this product right here, we can do it, and here's kind of the steps. Right? What we do is we know we're going to have to have acid in this reaction, so we acetylate our amine. He looks like this. It keeps one hydrogen, has that big carbon piece right there. I might have to move this down. We can go ahead and do our thing right here. I'm going to have to move this down a little bit. We're going to go ahead and do our sulfur trioxide and H2SO4. He stays the same up top. Our acetylated amine. And now we have our sulfonyl group on the bottom. And there's a way to remove this group. And you only need to throw in acid, right? And before, like I said, with the sulfonyl group removal, you need acid and heat. However, to take off this acetyl group, all you need is acid, right? So you can see that the acid took this piece off, but it, this, the SO3H remained. If we added in heat, then they both would be gone. Okay, this is a pretty tricky, useful one to know. Now, we have a few more to go, but they're not as involved as this. As this. They're more just completing the reactions one step type things. So stick with me. Okay, guys. So the last two reactions I kind of want to you know, go over. One we've talked a little bit about, but these are the last two I want to talk about. And then in the next video, we'll do a lot of complete the reaction uh, problems to practice together. And then you can do them on the worksheet as well as the same thing with synthesis. We'll do a couple and then you can go do the rest on the worksheet. Okay, so we saw in the last part of this video that if you have a nitro group and then you throw in some H2 and then PDC, some palladium uh, adsorbed carbon catalyst, you can reduce your, your nitro group to an amine. Well, there's also another set of reagents you can do that with. It doesn't really matter which one you use, just if you like one better than the other or if you need to have the option to, there you go. If you use something called the Clemenson reduction, it's you use a zinc mercury amalgam, so that's a fun word, ZN with like parentheses around the HG, and then, whoops, not that, not just CL, we need, we need HCL, sorry. So use the zinc mercury amalgam and some HCL, that also accomplishes the same effect. So we knew that, we did that in the last video, it takes our electron withdrawing group, meta director, to a very powerful strong electron donating group, and ortho para director. So up top, if you did some Friedel Crafts acylation, right, and you had some carbon piece with a carbonyl in this benzylic position, right, in the position directly off the, the benzene ring, let's just say you wanted to get rid of it. Maybe you're only interested in a product with no carbonyls at all. Well, we can get rid of these carbonyls in the benzylic position, only in the benzylic position, with uh, either using H2PDC, the same reagents down here, or you can also use that Clemson reduction with the zinc mercury amalgam and the HCl. So I just want to make sure how you can use this. So let me erase the bottom reaction just to give you an example. So let's just say you had a benzene ring and we had this type of 
Frito Craft's acylation that occurred. Well, if I used, whoops, let's just say I used the H2 PDC, here's my product. You don't touch the carbon piece at all, you just wipe away the carbonyl. However, let me change it slightly. Let's say I had this aldehyde at the end. Okay, how does that change? Well, like I said, we only touch, we only touch the benzylic carbonyl. So this carbonyl would stick around if this was the case. So remember, it's only the benzylic carbonyl. Okay, so thanks for giving me your attention on this one, guys. I promise you these seem minor, but they will help us a lot with synthesis problems and completing the reaction. In the next video, I want to start off by commenting on a little thing with oops, uh, halogens and their directing properties, just a little thing, and then we'll do some predicting the products, some synthesis, and then we will finally close the door on aromatic stuff, and then we're going to go head first into carbonyls. See you in the next video.